Welcome back, Nick Lynch's Comic Corner. Classic slash non-classic. This is episode number uh, 363. No, this is not a double shot. This is a single shot. Okay? Batman, Detective Comics, Volume 1, Rise of Batman. Collecting issues, and it actually says on here, 934 to 940. Yes, a seven issue arc that came out over the course of exactly a little over three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much Batman assembles a team comprised of, well, himself, a team that he recruits Batwoman, Clayface, Red Robin, Orphan, and Spoiler. Um, this is the first time in the past five years that Red Robin has been a regular fixture in the Batman comics. He's popped up now and again. Mainly he's been confined to Teen Titan comics. Excuse me. He's been confined to Teen Titan series for the past, well, as of last year, for five years. Spoiler herself mainly showed up in the pages of Batman Eternal. And after that, she got moved over to Catwoman briefly. And then she can move to Batgirl. She also showed up in Batman Robin Eternal. And of course, now she's in here. Though she doesn't stay for too long in this series because with the next arc, which comes right after Monster Men, she leaves the team. Tim, of course, Lee, he's off the roster with this particular arc. Wraps up. Mainly because he apparently dies. Um, as for, oh, and Cassandra Cain, a.k.a. Orphan. Though it's odd, though, she assumed her father's code name. Uh, from the Batman and Robin Eternal series, it's great the fact that Batman recruited of all people Clayface. I thought that was great, and of course Batwoman herself. All the issues are written by James Tinney the Fourth, which I had heard something originally that um, <clears throat> before it was announced that he, he, James Tinney the Fourth took up the writing for this originally. Uh, Scott Snyder, I uh, heard a rumor swirling around that Scott Snyder was going to come back to take the comics for the first time since 2011. Instead, he went over to All-Star Batman. Now, there are three artists on here. You have Eddie Barros, Alvar Martinez, and Al Barlanfield, I think it's a good name. Uh, Baron U. Evil. I'm sorry for this pronunciation, but I'm just doing the best I can. Um, Eddie Burrows does the first couple issues. Eddie Burrows draws most of the issues in this particular storyline. Now, excuse me, also Asra shows up in here as well. Prior to this, this was actually his first appearance since the Batman Robin Eternal series, which, by the way, it's awesome. Go find it. You can find it in trades. It's only two trades. And it's a 26 issue series that has two main storylines, but there's a few minor plot lines here and there, but generally stuff here and there. Uh, Nightwing shows up in the end as reference to, to Midnighter, which is nice because I gotta admit the Midnighter book was awesome when I read it. And I like the fact Midnighter shows up now and again in DC Universe. I mean, since Rebirth happened, I mean, what the heck has the guy done? Well, he sure he had a mini series with Apollo. That's really it. And I heard something he might be going back to Wild Swim Universe, but I don't know. It's not officially been confirmed yet. Now Batman assembles his team to take on the group known as the Colony. But of course after the storyline, the team pretty much stays together and uh when the storyline wraps up, Tim Drake is replaced by Batwing. And then after making up sending a storyline, Stephanie Brown leaves. When I get to that trade, I will be ranting over it and how dumb of a decision it was. And of course, she's later replaced by Azrael. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basically the only people who actually stay with this particular... Now, Hit the Comics has become basically a group book. Uh, it's a team of people led by Batman. Currently, this is actually one of three teams he he's actually part of. He's also part of the main Justice League and the Justice League of America, which is written by Steve Alano. Awesome series, by the way. It's only two issues in. 
Now, one of the supporting villains in the storyline is Ulysses Armstrong. I am familiar with him due to the fact that he was the first, uh, I think he was the second Red Robin in the pre-Flashman continuity, and he also was the second person to assume the identity of Anarchy. Yep, Anarchy. Who in this continuity was a corrupt politician. Actually, there's been two of them. The other one showed up for one issue of Green Lantern Corps, Volume 3. Though that one's since been wrecked kind of continuity due to the other one. Now, um, the, the one who is regularly Anarchy, he showed up a few times, but he was never Anarchy in the first place. Yep, but despite that, this is a really fun storyline. Uh, James Tinnett does a great job with this. You know, if James Tinnett was not chosen to be the writer of this, you know who also would have been a great choice to write these issues? Steve Orlando, or maybe even Tim Seeley, or even Tom King. But t but Tinney was fine. I got no problem with him because the guy was was basically. I've heard some people put it that James in the Fourth was basically Scott Snyder's apprentice on the Batman title because he co-wrote a lot of the issues of the 52 issues that came out for the previous Spider-Man Batman. Uh, Tinney of wrote about a co-wrote with him about 10, 10 about 10 to 15 of them, um, and of course Tinney of they his, he's had a couple series where he's actually you know, been the sole writer of. Uh, he was the writer for Talon, awesome book, despite the fact the book got cancelled after issue 17, and of course he was also the writer of the series uh, Constant Hellblazer, a series that was recently cancelled last year after only publishing 13 issues. But he's mainly stuck to the Batman books. Basically, up until Rebirth, he was actually one of two... <clears throat> Uh, Batman writers who basically Scott Snyder was so focused firmly on Batman if there was any like one shots or any miniseries because Scott Snyder was so busy with Batman usually DC would turn to either James Tinneth or Peter J. Tomasi to write these books and if you check if you look at the Balance Month books um, a good majority of them are either written by Peter J. Tomasi or James Tinneth IV and those were for the for the four books that had Batman. Uh, this this was for Detective, Batman, Batman and Robin, and Batman and the Dark Knight. If you look at them, a lot of them written by either James Tinnius or Peter J. Tomasi. Though at least a couple of them. One was written by in this entity. Excuse me, another one, another one was written by Gail but mostly Tinnius was the one he's writing. <laughs> but excuse me, but, but, but mostly when it comes to miniseries. A lot of time period to Massey, but there's only one miniseries Tinny wrote that's a Batman miniseries, and that's Batman Teenage Mutant Turtles, uh, which was a six issue limited series. <coughs> Excuse me, which was followed up very recently with the Batman Teenage Mutant Turtles Adventures, which was written by somebody else, and it just crossed over Batman Animated Series with uh, the 2012 Teenage Mutant Turtles series. But yeah, but this, this is awesome. Um, this is only my third Rebirth trade I've, ever re I've actually reviewed. First was Action Comics, then it was Suicide Squad, now it's Detective Comics. The rate, oh, I, I gotta show up the artwork. The artwork is fantastic. Yes. This is the one of the things that Detective Comics has been praised for, is the fact that it's gorgeous artwork. Um, that's one thing interesting that we gotta love a Detective. Uh, even the brief, even the previous stuff done by the various writers, none of the issues had bad artwork from what I remember. Not even the issues in here are bad, rightly drawn. They're actually drawn really well. It looks so gorgeous. And one thing I can also praise this for is great pacing. It builds, even though this is a seven-part story, it builds. It's kind of like two different arcs that are loosely... Uh, it's like these seven issues, like the first half are just loosely set up, and then the second half is basically the epic stuff. So, so you have Tinny of started up with the stuff, then of course you have Monster Men, then you have um, the Victim Syndicate, which is basically a follow-up to this and Monster Men, and of course Batwoman Begins, the 950, and now of course the League of Sash also, which is the follow-up to this particular arc. Yeah, the thing that basically that Batman thought was a myth, 
turns out to be completely true, thanks to the core setup with issue 950. But, like I said, this is awesome. What rating am I give this? I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 because all these issues are just pure awesomeness at its finest. Thank you, Tinnieth. Hopefully get my hands in the next volume soon. Alright, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode number 363. If I'm mistaken, is it 363? No. 364, and hopefully it's a double shot. If it's double shot, it's going to be double shot 290. Okay? Excuse me. Let's do that. Excuse me. I will see you there. Bye.